Hey, good evening. This evening we're going to dive a little deeper. And before we do, though, we want to begin with prayer. Here for a moment, the uh, prayer slides will be on the screen. Feel free to share prayer requests and uh, especially those praise reports. Let us know about how God is working in your life. And uh, please be sure to share those with us so that we can keep track of the number of times that God has answered prayer. Choose somebody in your group to uh, pray for us as we begin this evening's session. Well, this past Sunday, we talked a little bit about uh, the idea of seeing clearly, uh, seeing more clearly, and how that helps us, enables us to live to our maximum potential. I want you to think about for a moment a, a story, a funny story, hopefully, that uh, you didn't see or hear something correctly. And as a result, uh, some funny things happened as a result of, of you not seeing or hearing clearly or somebody not seeing or hearing clearly. I'll start. I, I'll never forget. I was with uh, an associate pastor of mine. He was our senior adult pastor when I pastored in South Florida, the Church of Nazarene there, Redland Church of Nazarene in South Florida. And uh, we were going to the hospital in a hospital call or making some visits or doing something together. And, and so I, uh, he picked me up and I climbed into his truck and and uh, we were going to, uh, to travel together for this, uh, this hospital call. As I got in, I, I noticed uh, sitting beside him on the, the seat right next to his leg was a, uh, a TV remote. And uh, I, I looked at it kind of oddly. Uh, and uh, there, after a few moments passed, I, I picked it up from the, the bench seat uh, that we were sitting in, a bench seat on a on an old pickup truck, and, and I, I, I said, Pastor Don, what do you have this for? And uh, he said, oh, well, that's my cell phone. And I said, well, no, Pastor Don, this is not a cell phone. It is a television remote. 
he had apparently picked up his TV remote from the uh, coffee table where his phone was next to and, and thinking it was his cell phone back in the day when, when the cell phones weren't touch screens but had, uh, had keypads on them. He, he grabbed it, glanced at it, and, and, uh, and thought that his, his television remote, which was probably about the same size as an old cell phone, uh, was his cell phone. We laughed and kind of hee-hawed about that and uh, joked about the fact that uh, it was probably uh, no wonder that uh, he wasn't receiving many calls or able to call anyone out. Funny things happen when you don't see clearly or hear something. Share your story with the group of something funny that happened as a result of you or someone else not seeing or hearing clearly. Funny things always seem to happen when we uh, misunderstand what is taking place by not seeing clearly. Not always funny, but many times there are some funny things that happen as a result. Sight is an important thing. But I, I want us to understand that it is not just what we see that's important. It's not just seeing clearly. Seeing clearly goes beyond a function of sight. Uh, there are people uh, that, uh, that are born blind, that don't have the ability to see, uh, but really see more clearly than, than some might give them credit for. When we talk about seeing, seeing clearly, it, it is this understanding of, of comprehension, of not just seeing the picture, but, but understanding, not just seeing what's going on, but, but understanding I'm always amazed at Cora and Yolanda's son, Isaac, who is blind. But the ability that Isaac has to see situations and circumstances, even though he does not have his sight, his depth of, understand, his depth of understanding, and his insight into situations and circumstances amazed me oftentimes at how well Isaac sees the situation. Again, he may not be able to physically see it, 
but his ability to understand what is going on. And that's really what seeing clearly is all about. It's not just about getting the right eyewear. It's not just about getting uh, the cataracts uh, removed from our, our physical eyes so that we can see, but it is, it is the, the comprehension. You remember, as we talked about on Sunday, uh, the, the function of the eyes really just feed the mind and the brain uh, those, that information that enables us to process that information. Just because we can see physically clearly does not mean that we are comprehending or understanding. Such was the case with the disciples as we talked about on Sunday that, that they were overwhelmed with the, the fact that they thought Jesus was getting on to them because they didn't have enough bread for the journey. When Jesus had just performed miracles after miracles and sign after sign that showed that little is much when God is in it. We can trust him. We can rely on him. They were seeing, but they were not understanding. And the ability to really truly see clearly and understand is a powerful, powerful thing. What is it you think that causes us not to see clearly? That's the question I'd like for you to discuss here for just a few moments. What is it that you think causes us, not again, not just physical sight, but the comprehension, the understanding, uh, the the, the spiritual depth. What is it that causes us not to see clearly? Talk about that and then we'll come back. No doubt you, you offered some great suggestions as to things that don't allow us to see clearly. But I think there's one thing that it all boils down to. It could be said that, that sin doesn't cause us to, that blocks our vision or, or doesn't enable us to see clearly. It could be some of the things that we are looking at, or some of the things that, that we have in our past, or some of the things that have shaped us and molded us that, 
that uh, cause us not to see clearly. But all of these things, and, and maybe even all of the suggestions that you and your group discuss, that cause us to have poor sight, poor understanding, all of these things probably could be boiled down to one basic element, and that is self. You remember that self-centeredness is the basis for all sin. All sin has wound up in it some form of self-centeredness or selfishness. And when we're consumed with self, self-centeredness and selfishness, we will never, we will never be able to see clearly. We must learn to look beyond our nose. We, we must learn to look past ourselves. For oftentimes when all we look, when we look into a situation, when we look into a circumstance, when we listen to what is being said, if self consumes our thoughts, our minds, our hearts, our lives, if, if, if we are the center of our own universe, uh, then we will never be able to see clearly. We'll never be able to see what God really has in store for us. For as long as self sits on the throne, for as long as, as self-centeredness rules the day, we will never be able to see past our nose. We'll never be able to see the needs of others. We'll never be able to hear the hurts that others are going through. When somebody attacks and somebody hurts someone, it's often said that, that hurting people hurt other people. But if we're consumed with self, we will never see their hurt and only feel the hurt that they place upon us. We'll never see the opportunity that there, there may be a bigger picture at work. There may be more things happening in the background than what I can see or understand. When it all revolves around Darren Pound, when it all revolves around myself and my self-wishes, my self-desires, my self-wants, then I can never see the needs of others, the hurts of others, or what God may want to do in my life and situation. For oftentimes, all we can see is the bare minimum. We were driving down the road, our family one day, and uh, we were coming through a, a country area. The girls were, were little and they were all in the car. And, and my girls, they, they loved horses and, and still to this day do. Uh, and, and as we were driving by, I saw a horse out in a pasture in a field and, and pointed it out and, and asked my girls if they, they saw the horse. Everybody saw it. Haley, I think, was, was too small at the time. But uh, everybody saw it except uh, one of my daughters. One of my older daughters, she uh, just decided that uh, she didn't see it. She missed it. But, uh, but there, in a few moments later, she said, well... I think I saw the horse's tail. <laughs> to this day, that's, that's kind of an ongoing uh, family joke. When, whenever somebody doesn't see something, we say, well, did, did you see its tail? Did, did you see the horse's tail? Obviously, if you're, you're driving down the road and, and you, you saw a horse's tail, you, you saw more than, than, than just the tail. You, you had to have seen the rest of it. I didn't realize this and until recently. We were, we were talking about this and kind of laughing about this. And, and, and my daughter was explaining it to a friend of hers. And, and she said, well, I, I really just wanted to fit in. Everybody else had seen it. And, and so I just wanted to, to fit in. And so I, I made up the fact that I saw the horse's tail. Just wanting to be a part and sometimes when we're consumed with self, when, when we just want to fit in, when we just want to plug in, when, when we just want to be a part because it, it's about me and what I need and what I want, then I don't see clearly. Maybe I, I think I see something that's not really there. Or maybe I make up something that isn't really there. Maybe, maybe I play tricks in my own mind to, to believe that something is there that isn't even there. Sometimes the enemy loves to play games with our vision, our sight, mainly our understanding, not just our physical sight, but our, our understanding, and give us ideas and thoughts of things that 
don't really exist. When somebody says something, if we're consumed or already hurt by a situation or circumstance, if we're not careful, we will, we will predetermine what, what this person is going to say and how this person is going to respond based on something that happened in the past. Sometimes uh, people treat whole segments of society, stereotyping them because of, of something that they have seen or something that they have read or something that they have been hurt by. And all of a sudden, that's just the way all men are. or That's just the way all women are. or That's just the way this, this segment of society is based on, on skin color or background or, or racial, racial profiling. Because of, of something that we see, we can't unsee it in anyone else. And again, that all boils down to, to self-centeredness. And sometimes we even begin to see things that were never there in the first place. So in order to see clearly, we must learn to remove self from the equation. Now I understand that we may never fully be able to remove ourselves from that, but it is the, the self-centeredness and the selfishness uh, that, that consumes us, that clouds our vision and doesn't enable us to see through the eyes of Jesus. So you remember from Mark chapter 8, of all these stories and all these things, it all boiled down to one vital question. Jesus said, what about you? Who do you say that I am? He'd asked the disciples who, who others thought he was. Uh, but now he wanted to know and, and wanted them to, to process and understand what they were seeing. When you look at me, who do you see? What do you see? What about you? Who do you say that I am? And so focusing on Jesus as we, as we wrapped up on Sunday, our focus on Jesus is the thing that will enable us to see more clearly. Our focus on him is the very thing that will enable us and empower us to see more clearly what God has for us, what God wants for us, and what God is, is trying to do in us and through us. That's the last question I want you to try and discuss here this evening. How is it that we can keep focused on who Jesus is? How can we keep focused on who Jesus is? Talk about that and we'll come back in just a few moments.
Well, I'm sure there are lots of great answers like spending time in prayer, spending time in God's word, fellowship with other believers and, and church attendance. Those are, are, are some of the core elements that, that help us to, to stay focused. I think all of these things and all of these suggestions that uh, we might have discussed boil down to, again, one basic concept, and that is time spent with Jesus. Time spent in his word, time spent in prayer, time spent in fellowship with other believers and worship of God together, time spent in, in serving and, and doing his will, not, not just once a week, not just a couple, couple times a week or not just a few moments in the morning, but time spent with Jesus throughout the entire day. We see that the disciples, the, the more time they spent with Jesus, uh, the closer they became to each other and to the Lord. Uh, the more time they spent in his presence and, and listening to his teaching and, and hearing his word and, and experiencing his, his training, the more clearly they saw and understood and recognized who he is. I often think, wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be great to, to be able to sit at the feet of the master? Wouldn't it be great to sit on a hillside and, and listen to Jesus teach? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be amazing to, uh, to uh, uh, witness some of the miracles that Jesus performed? And while the answer is yes, I, I think in some ways we live even in a more amazing opportunity of time because we don't just have bits and pieces of time to spend with Jesus. We can spend with him as much time as, as we will allow, even while we're busy, even while we're working, even while we're going through daily life. He, his presence is there with us. The disciples, they only had him when it was physical one-on-one -on -one time, and, and that was valid, and that was important. But, but you and I have been afforded the privilege that Jesus said when he, he left that he would send us the Comforter, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God, the very Spirit of Jesus himself that would lead us and guide us into all truth. And so it's not just when, when we're standing there with Jesus, but when we're standing alone and no one else is there. It is all boils down to time spent with Jesus. You know, when I've had a, had a rough day and, and things uh, haven't been going the way that I wanted to or, or things are, are, are at a, a struggle or there's, there's just a, a, a plethora of, of issues going on, oftentimes I find that just a hug from my wife, and, I, and I've told her this on, on numerous occasions, you know, everything just feels better when I'm hugging you. And you know, that, as true as that is, how much more is that the case when we spend time with our Lord and Savior? When we just wrap our arms of love around God and say, God, hold me. Hold me close. Don't ever let me go, as the song says. Draw me in and, and help me to, to hear from you and, and hear your word and, and hear what you're saying. Help me in a group setting like this to, to listen to the testimonies of others and, and to be inspired by the encouragement of others but, and to sense your presence in a place like this where the scripture says where two or three are gathered together in his name. He is there with us. And what a powerful, powerful testimony it is to just be in his presence to be wrapped in his arms of love and know that in his arms, everything is going to be all right. You see, the closer we get to Jesus, the more clearly we see and understand his will, his purpose, his plan. Even when things don't add up, even when things don't make sense, even when things are not working out the way that we want them to. Just a moment of prayer just a, a moment to pull aside to his word, just a song on the radio, just a, a testimony from a friend, just a, an encouraging note, a phone call, a text uh, from, from a fellow believer, a family member. It is the Spirit of God working in them and through them and in us and through us, and it helps us to keep focused on who Jesus is. It's just simply spelled T-I-M-E. 
the more time we spend with Jesus, the more focused we are on who he is and what his purpose is. And so if I can challenge you with anything this evening, it's very simply this. I learned this years ago. The closer I get to God, the more clearly I see and understand everything, everything that is going on. So draw close to God. And the promise of his word is, is that if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And we will see more clearly. And we will have more strength. And we will be invigorated to carry on because he will never leave us nor forsake us. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for this amazing body of believers. Thank you, O oh God, for these times in which we can come together, we can laugh together, we can share together, we can cry together, we can carry each other's burdens. I pray, God of heaven, that you would just empower us and enable us to, to be the people of God that you want us to be. I pray, God of heaven, that you would just continue to watch over us and direct us and keep us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake, that you might be glorified in all that is said and done. I pray, God, that you'd help me, you'd help us to draw close to you, that we might see clearly and be focused on who you are in Christ's precious and holy name. And all the God's people said, amen. amen. Well, core groups will be started back up in, in uh, homes and in various locations coming up on on the week of, uh, of October the 16th. And uh, this weekend we'll be sharing some of those locations and times and opportunities. And I, I really want to challenge you to get plugged into one of these. I, I know many of you have been a part of our Wednesday night core group over the summer break. And, and I'm grateful for that. And, and I think it's phenomenal. We'll continue to do that. But there will be multiple other opportunities for you to gather together and, and, uh, and share in smaller groups even in homes and, and different places at different times. And, and I want to encourage you to get plugged into those because those are valuable times. We've heard some great testimonies of how God has used those moments and those seasons to, to draw us closer to each other and most importantly closer to Him. Then this coming Sunday night after at, the, it, at about 6 o'clock in the evening, we'll be uh, developing and, and sharing with you a new ministry that's entitled Call to Care. We want to find ways and means that we as a body of believers can, can wrap our arms of encouragement and help and love. So many of you do this in a, in, a, in, a, in a great way. Personally already, you don't need a program to tell you to do this. But, but we want to make sure that, that nobody's dropping through the cracks, that nobody's missing out. And so if you would be willing to, uh, to come and just find out more about what this will look like, and how you can get plugged in. You don't have to commit to it. You don't have to say, I'm going to do it or, or not do it. But just want to encourage you to join us uh, this Sunday evening, 6 p.m. here at the church uh, as we uh, talk about what it means to be called to care. Hope that you'll plan to, to join with us. Hey, lots and lots of things coming up in the life of the church. Lots of activities going on. Be sure to check the church calendar. Go to our website. You can find the upcoming events on our, our church website. And uh, as always, have a great night. And we look forward to being with you this weekend. God bless you.